What's up guys? So, with E3 coming up in the next few days, I obviously thought it would be the perfect time for me to talk about what I hope to see announced over the course of the next week or so. And now, if you have been a subscriber of mine for the last few months, you may or may not be confused as to why I'm talking about this again. And well, it's pretty simple. Last time I covered the subject of E3, I talked about what I would like to see Nintendo announce, and this time around, I'm going to be covering all of E3. Or at least the companies that I actually actually care about. From Ubisoft Forward to Capcom and Square Enix's presentations to Xbox and Bethesda, as well as some additional predictions that I have for Nintendo, since a few things have been rumored to be happening since I first made that one video. But before I start off this video, I decided that I am going to split it up into two. So in this video, I'm going to be finishing off my Nintendo predictions, as well as covering my predictions for Capcom and Square Enix. And the second part of this video, I will be covering what I'm expecting from Ubisoft and Xbox. So if you're interested in what I have to say about that, then make sure to check it out after you finish this video. And now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So to start off the video, let's get the Nintendo predictions out of the way. Last time around, I had a few people complain about me not having a Donkey Kong prediction, and honestly, I didn't make one for Mr. Kong, purely because I didn't think we would get a game this year despite it being the 40th anniversary for DK. Since I was under the impression that Kid Icarus isn't going to be the only franchise with an anniversary this year that is also forgotten about. And Diddy Kong getting that updated art didn't really mean much to me at the time. But unfortunately, it's looking like I was very wrong and Kid Icarus will end up being forsaken yet again. Anyways, not even two weeks after my first predictions video, we ended up getting news that the team behind Mario Odyssey is supposedly working on a brand new Donkey Kong game. And with that news also brought a lot of speculation of whether or not the next Donkey Kong game will be a 2D platformer or a 3D platformer. And personally, since Odyssey's team is behind this game, I firmly believe that it will end up being a 3D platformer because Donkey Kong is one of the few Nintendo platforming franchises that has yet to break its traditional formula. But I would also be perfectly fine if it ended up being a 2D platforming game since I'm not really that picky. But at the same time, I have only ever played the very first Donkey Kong Country, so maybe my opinion isn't exactly the best, since I am by no means a Donkey Kong fan. Next, we're moving on to Pikmin. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure how likely this is considering Pikmin 3 just got a deluxe version last year, but given that Pikmin 4 has been in development apparently since 2015, I'm hoping that we don't end up having another Bayonetta 3 situation on our hands, so personally, I'm really hoping that we at least get a teaser for Pikmin 4. And if not, an update on that mobile app would be perfectly fine too, I guess. And obviously, since I brought up Bayonetta 3, I am hoping for some type of update for Bayonetta 3. Honestly, even if they just gave us the 54 second teaser trailer again, I'd be perfectly happy. Because I'm honestly not going to listen to Hideki Kamaya, I simply refuse to forget about it. And I know that I have a lot of expectations for the Nintendo Direct at E3, but with the Treehouse portion of their panel being 3 hours long, they will hopefully have a bunch of things to show us. Because I highly doubt that they would give us a 3 hour presentation if they had no games to announce in E3. And now that concludes the Nintendo portion of this video. So if you want to see the rest of my predictions for Nintendo's Direct at E3, make sure to check out this video right here. But for now, enough with the shilling. Since Square Enix and Capcom are also going to be at E3, I want to cover what I want to see with them since you may not know this about about me just yet, but I am a huge fan of just about every single franchise that they have created. So I am going to start off with Square Enix. Obviously, we should end up seeing more of Final Fantasy 16. Since back in September of 2020, we got the trailer for it and have heard practically nothing about it since September. And I am honestly dying to see more of this game. With Intergrade being released on June 10th, I don't really think that we will be seeing anything for Final Fantasy 7 at E3, unfortunately but that doesn't exactly mean that they will be having a boring showcase, because there is also Dragon Quest 3's remake that I personally am praying we will end up getting a release date for, and maybe even a gameplay trailer, but honestly, I don't really think that it's necessary, since just off of the reveal trailer alone, we all know what to expect, and I personally already know that I'm going to buy it. And speaking of HD 2D games, I'm hoping that we get an update for Project Triangle Strategy, and hopefully they decide to change the fucking name, because for as good as this game is, 
The name is so underwhelming. And if I'm going to be making videos about this game in the future, I really would like a better title. And lastly for Square Enix, another Marvel game maybe? Though with how terrible the Avengers game ended up being, I would be very surprised if Marvel didn't burn that bridge to the ground, as well as the contract. And since Star Wars changed hands from EA to Ubisoft, maybe it would be best if Marvel did the same. Purely because now that they have botched the first game, I'm sure that the future games will never get the sales that they deserve if the development team behind Avengers learned their lesson. Now on to Capcom. A handful of these, I'm going to be honest with you, have no chance in hell of happening, but a man can dream, am I right? So let's start it off with the most realistic ones, first of which being an announcement for Resident Evil Village's DLC, or a teaser for it at least, because I'm not entirely sure if it's too soon or not for that. With being an internet sensation because of Lady Demetresque, maybe they just decided to push it up a little bit, but to be frank I am just dying to start playing Village again and I really want this inevitable DLC, so Capcom, I'm begging you please throw me a bone. Continuing on with the Resident Evil topic, instead of the DLC, since Village did literally come out last month, we will 1000% get a look at Resident Evil 4's remake. I mean, honestly, we will probably get a look at Resident Evil 4 regardless, since it's coming out next year, and the original game is arguably the best game in the entire franchise, and Capcom would be out of their fucking minds to miss this opportunity. But moving on, another game that is slated to be coming out next year is Street Fighter 6. And though I haven't touched a Street Fighter game since I was like 11, I really am looking for a reason to get back into it, because it is one of my favorite fighting game franchises of all time. And with Street Fighter 5 not being exactly the best game in the world from what I've heard, I'm really hoping that Street Fighter 6 surprises people and it ends up being a return to form. But with that being said, I'm honestly only expecting a teaser trailer for Street Fighter 6, since we don't really know when it will be released next year, and Capcom might be holding on to the full shebang for next year's E3. And lastly, for the most realistic things to happen for Capcom's presentation, we have Devil May Cry 6. Considering that Devil May Cry 5 has the best sales record of any DMC title without the help of Special Edition, I think Capcom would be missing out if they didn't keep the ball rolling with announcing either a spin-off or the sixth entry that I just mentioned. Or based off of the history with all of the Devil May Cry games, the Special Edition for DMC 5 might be the only thing that we get for quite a while. But I really want to see how Capcom continues with the slight changes that that they added in 5, so I'm really hoping that we see Dante again in a new game soon. And now we head into the abyss of things that will probably never happen. The first of which being the resurrection of the Darkstalkers franchise. Yes, the pun was intended. Personally, I think since Capcom released Resurrection about 13 years after Chronicle, maybe they are waiting another decade for an additional entry into the franchise. I mean, sure, the two most famous characters from the series, Morgan and Felicia, pop up in just about any other fighting game. But I'm sure the fan base of Darkstalkers is dying to see the rest of the franchise return. And honestly, even if Capcom just does release another collection pack, I don't know about you, but I am willing to accept that. Because something is better than nothing. And regardless if we even get anything or not, we all have solace in knowing that we will see Morgan in the next Capcom crossover game. And finally, maybe, just maybe, we will hear something about Tekken X Street Fighter. I mean, it's been a decade since its initial announcement, and and before anyone says anything, I know the game was being made by Namco, but I've been waiting for way too long for two of my favorite fighting franchises to cross over with one another. So I know it's not going to happen, but I really just hope that Capcom gives us an update. And with that being said, that's about it for this video. If you guys have any additional predictions or games you are excited for that I either forgot to mention or just straight up didn't, let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, let me know which panel you guys are excited for the most. Also, I may end up streaming the Xbox and Nintendo panels, but if not, I will be uploading my reactions, as well as going over everything I am most excited for when E3 is done and over with. So, make sure to keep an eye out for all of that, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video.